my four players that are the leaders projecting forward as well in the Heisman boat and the Heisman trophy race. So the four players that I think are in best position to win the Heisman trophy will be as follows. Uh, Cooper, what should people do in four downs? The day Oh, Cooper. Uh, uh, my goodness. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm on the wrong button. Cooper Mays here. Hit like and subscribe. All right, the four players that I think are in the best position to win the Heisman. First down, Coop. Coop here. First down. I got to go Quinn Ewers uh, after beating Michigan on the road. Now, let me set this up before we get to Nico and you all ask him, tell me that Nico is far more talented. This is a combination of three things in my mind. What has happened to this point, which is just two games and not a lot of great competition, what I see moving forward, and then I'm a nerd. I was up at 4 a.m. watching film of all of these guys. So I think Quinn Hewers is in the best position because I think he's a leader. He's a big part of that team. Texas could win a national championship. So I've got Hewers number one in week two. And it's funny you say that because Quinn Ewers is now the favorite on FanDuel. Um, Dylan Gabriel, who had been the favorite uh, for two weeks, has completely fallen off, funny enough. He's not even in the top ten now. And I, I understand your point. Quinn Ewers does have six touchdowns and one interception. Um, I still don't think – I still don't believe in him long-term, Dave. And I know that's crazy to say, but I still think there might be a quarterback controversy before it's all said and done and, and – um, down in Austin. And I know that sounds crazy, but I don't no, I think don't, I don't I don't think it sounds crazy. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. But just as of right now, uh I don't yeah, I don't think Quinn Hewers is gonna win the Heisman. I don't think he's gonna be the number one pick in the NFL draft. I don't think he's gonna be in the top five or anything like that. But right now, I think he's number one in terms of positioning going forward. All right. Uh, I think what would happen now, you're referring to Arch Manning. What would have to happen there, Caleb, and I think you would agree here, is the season would have to go off the rails for him to get a shot. As long as Hewers plays above average, he's going to hold on to that role. It's hard to make a change midseason when you're playing for a championship. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Um, I um, I don't think – Quinn Ewers would have to lose the job, put it that way. Um, but exactly. I'm not saying the season won't go off the rails. Maybe I'm going – maybe I'm leaning there, guys. No, it might. Number two, what down, Coop? Cooper Mays here. Second down. Thank you. Georgia quarterback Carson Beck. I wrote in my column that the award has changed. It's not a running back award. It is usually a quarter, almost always, a quarterback award. Uh, seven of the last, uh, six of the last seven, I believe. So uh, it is six of the last seven. So it's a quarterback award. And if you're on the best team, that's helpful. I think Georgia right now, I, I want to see a little bit more, but I think Georgia is the best football team out there. So Carson Beck is in a premier position to win the Heisman. Plus, yeah, I know you don't like the TV deal, but ESPN is going to promote the SEC heavily, which will help the next guy I'm going to mention, whose name might rhyme with Rico. But what do you think of Carson Beck? I mean, yeah, what can we say about Carson Beck? He's completing 71% of his passes with seven touchdowns and no interceptions and has played a quality opponent. I mean, there it's – it's again, I, we talked about this yesterday. I still think Nico will be – and I, I think we both agree Nico will be better than Carson Beck at the end of the year. But right now, yes, Carson Beck belongs at the top of the Heisman race. He is the – he is putting up Heisman stats as a quarterback on what we all believe to be the best team in college football. Agreed. All right. Why Nico can win it, the show represented by Banks and Jones. Well, it's because they're Tennessee's trial attorney. You can play to win with Banks and Jones because they'll go to trial. You've heard of other lawyers. They say they'll go to trial and fight for you. They won't. They just want to settle. That's the easiest way out. Well, that's not Banks and Jones led by T. Scott Jones. They won't settle. They'll go to trial for you. Tennessee's trial attorney. They play to win truly Tennessee's trial attorney when it comes to criminal defense or personal injury. Why settle? It's Banks and Jones. T. Scott Jones. Banksandjones.com. Tennessee Center Cooper Mays here. Third down. All right, I have 
this guy named Nico as my third highest rated Heisman candidate based off what I think is going to happen this season. You've got Kent State, so I think his odds will even go up potentially after this week, especially if there's a stumble in front of him, and there wa- there might well be. Um, this would be interesting, though, about Nico. What if the running game is so good and the defense is so good that in his big debut year, he gets overshadowed a la, not comparing him to Stetson Bennett, but a la Stetson Bennett, who kind of was thought of as just around a great team and happened to stumble into a championship. Now, if you watch Stetson Bennett, he made a lot of plays in the clutch. So he's got a bad reputation as far as being an average quarterback. And I'm not comparing the two. Far more ability. But what if Tennessee's that good and is running the table? Could it actually work against them if they do it defensively and with slightly lower scores? And by slightly lower, I mean 30s or 40s instead of 50s and 60s. Well, n- no. You can all not disagree with me if you want. Just call me an You can call me an idiot. Well, no, because here's why. Part of this is reputation. Part of this is reputational, and what I mean by that is that, like, Stetson Bennett had the misfortune of also – one, Stetson Bennett wasn't the best quarterback in the SEC that year. The numbers didn't even back it up. I mean, Hendon Hooker and Bryce Young were better, and Hendon Hooker should have been in New York over Stetson Bennett that year. But then there's the other part of just the reputational fact that, like, everybody knows how Kirby Smart runs his program, whereas the way Josh Heifel runs his program, it's so quarterback-centric. The quarterback's still going to get more credit just because of the way people perceive the program. But, you know, you can be on those loaded teams and still – Go into Heisman. Look at Bryce Young. Everybody saw Nick Saban as a defensive coach, thought Alabama was loaded. They still gave Bryce Young to Heisman. Um, I assume that was your Heisman pick in 2021, Dave. I could be wrong on that, but you know, they uh, still gave Bryce in 2021, Heisman. Bryce Young was my Heisman pick. Yeah. Yes, yeah, in 2021. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think that taking that into account, and again, he was at Alabama with a Saban program and they gave it to him. So, I think you can still win it when you're when you're loaded elsewhere. I don't think that always works against you. Sometimes I think the opposite can be true. I think more often than not, when it comes to the Heisman, with the exception of Paul Hornung way back in 1956, people don't get enough credit for what they did given their lack of help a lot of times. Like Eli Manning should have won it in 03. True. Now, I'll be frank with you. I threw that out there. I think the offsetting is this. Josh Heupel wants to score points, and it matters to him. So... Tennessee's not going to turn into a 24 to 10 bump your team, even if they could be. I mean, that's just not going to happen. And I would argue that they could, if they wanted to be, run the football, run the football, uh, play defense. All right, what down is next, Coop, as I'll give you my fourth realistic Heisman finalist right now. All SEC center Cooper Mays here, fourth down. All right, number four, and then we'll get to some X factors and other dudes. Is Jackson Dart, I mean, the numbers are the numbers. He hasn't played anybody. I don't know. He might not even be on the list next week, but, uh, you know, they play Wisconsin, I believe. So, I, Dart's there. Um, I watched a lot of him. I do think you could make an argument that he is one of the most accurate quarterbacks. As a matter of fact, I'm not so sure that he isn't a – better NFL prospect uh, I'll go on records first go on record first I'm not sure he's not a better NFL prospect than Carson Beck we also know that um that Lane Kiffin not Josh Heupel wants to put up points like Josh Heupel so the numbers are going to be there right Caleb yeah they are but I can't even though Lane Kiffin tries to put up the numbers I can't ignore Jackson Dart's efficiency I mean This dude is averaging, he's completing 87% of his passes. He completed 93% of his passes uh, against Middle Tennessee. And by the way, broke T. Martin's SEC record, completed 24 straight passes. Now, yes, it was against Middle Tennessee. But you have criticized that record saying when they realized they were approaching it, they made a lot of easy screen passes. Jackson Dart threw for 377 yards. They were throwing it downfield. He threw it for 418 against... Furman. I know it's against those two, but good Lord, Dave, those are insane stats. Yes, very insane. Now, some X factors, and you can check this column out on offthehooksports.com. Miami quarterback Cam Ward, I just 
don't believe in him long term. Uh, Alabama quarterback Jalen Milrow. So Cam Ward's the hot one right now, but you don't win the Heisman in September. You don't even win it in October. Uh, and Jalen Milrow, I still have big questions if he's going to fit in Caitlin DeBoer's system. Now, if either of these guys, if if Ward continues on, uh, if Jalen Milrow fits into this system against elite competition, then they're X factors and they could be on this list in the next couple of weeks. But right now, I just don't know enough because I know what Cam Ward did to Florida, but uh, uh let me tell you something about Florida, Peyton. They're like, that is total bullshit. They're horrible. Okay? Horrible. All right. So I don't know what to draw from that. Samford. It's the same. What's that? They just beat Samford. Oh, yeah. That's really good. All right. So <laughs> what do you think of Cam Ward and Jalen Milrow's possibilities of winning the Jalen Milrow, Jalen Milrow is going to implode. That's going to happen. Cam Ward, I'm actually pretty high on. Um, I would say you should be worried about Cam Ward if you're a Tennessee fan or if you're a fan of any of these other teams. And here's why. I could I could end up looking stupid. Mario Cam Ward actually was leading my Heisman race through September last year before Washington State imploded. Mario Cristobal is still a terrible coach, but sometimes terrible coaches can land a generational quarterback and look really good that year, maybe even win a title or something like that. And then they're seen as great coaches. Uh, Dave, this could be Mario Cristobal's like Gene Ch Gene Chizik year. With that, he's not as special as Cam Newton. Come on. Cam Ward is a – I watched a lot of him last year, and I thought he was insanely good. And I just thought he had – now, Cam Newton didn't have a lot of help around him either, but let's be honest, Cam Newton had more help than Cam Ward would have had at Washington State. And, I mean, this dude is incredible, and he's playing. And whatever you think of Cristobal, Cristobal's spread offense, he does run a good system for this guy in Cam Ward. I mean, it, it, it's a really good match made in heaven, man. I mean, it is. Okay.